there are several security challenges. Um, I normally group them under uh, two categories. So when you look at Sub-Saharan Africa, there are some security challenges that um, are common to most of the countries um, in this region. Uh, you have uh, intra-state conflicts in Sudan, South, South Sudan, in Mali, in Central African Republic. Um, there are other issues uh, like um, harmed banditry. Um, more recently, climate change has actually contributed to insecurity in the region. Uh, we have uh, issues of changes in precipitation, which then change the dynamics of farming and, uh, and fishing around the region. And when you consider the fact that most of the people from this region, more than 60% of them, actually derive their livelihood from agriculture, any alteration or vagaries of the climate would impact on their sources of livelihood. And when people's livelihoods are being impacted negatively, they could react violently or join groups that could actually promise them alternative livelihoods. And that is why you, you would see that many harmed groups are, are, not, are never short of recruits in, in this region because there are hundreds of thousands, if not millions of unemployed youths who had their basically not thinking about buying a house or buying a car. They are thinking about the, where the next meal would come from. And if this group of people are, are not adequately um, sorted out by the state, they could actually be um, enticed by these organizations to impact to um, fight for them or to join their ranks. So we've seen an increase in, uh, in terrorism in, in places like Nigeria, Cameroon. Um, the Sahel, Sahara is a big one for terrorism. Trafficking is a big problem. Um, a huge um, drug trafficking hub in East Africa. And then xenophobia is um, uh, another problem in Southern Africa. Um, the so-called black on black attack um, whereby many people from South Africa feel that um, other Africans are taking away their jobs, taking away their sources of livelihoods, and then demanded that they should leave the country. And uh, they've been attacking them uh, since that time. So there, there are lots of issues that have actually ravaged um, the continent um, as a whole. Um, the, the other issues also are, are linked to politics and governance in this region. And the governance of natural resources still remains a problem for the region. So for instance, um, the issue of, uh, of resource costs um, is still there. And then the way these issues are being governed as well, it's, uh, it's another problem. Um, but another key issue which emerged in the last five years um, is the pastoral conflict. Uh, it's in about 13 African countries at the moment, whereby farmers, sedentary farmers, are at loggerheads with um, pastoralists, um, clashes in 13 African countries, and this has resulted in a whole lot of issues on its own. Uh, it's actually um, accounted for more debt than terrorism in the last two years, so it's a big problem facing Sub-Saharan Africa. At the moment, um, the regional security governance are on three or four different categories. So the local um, governance of security, we have the national, we have the regional, and then the international. Uh, so when we talk about the local um, as an alternative to security, because in many countries in sub-Saharan Africa, the state is either unwilling or unable to protect its people. And then the people are taking the laws in their hands on the local, at the local stage. So we've seen an increase in uh, vigilantism. So lots of vigilante groups are emerging um, at the local level in order to protect um, lives and properties. And this is um, a key issue because some of these vigilante groups are loosely affiliated, affiliated to the state. Some of them um, engage in extrajudicial killings. Some of them take the laws in their hands. So although it's a, a form of governance of security at the local level, it also creates a dynamics of problem at, at that level. So that's the first one. The second one is um, the 
regional initiative. So there are lots of, there's some regional initiatives that have been uh, developed to combat specific issues on, in sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, so there is the, the G5 Sahel, which is a group um, created to end or fight banditry, terrorism and insecurity in the Sahel. Um, there is the multinational joint tax force against Boko Haram. Um, this is composed of five countries, Nigeria, Niger, Chad, Cameroon, and Benin Republic, um, focused specifically on the issue of Boko Haram in these countries and around the Lake Chad axis. And then we have other groups. There's another group that was created um, to um, weaken the position of the Lost Resistance Army um, in that region as well. So there are regional security governance um, that's being put into place. Some of them are funded by the European Union, by external agents. Some of them have um, funding um, derived from the African Union, uh, but they also had um, a level of security uh, in terms of governance. It's another step in governance of, of security. Then we have the international um, security governance, which mainly composed of uh, bilateral agreements uh, between uh, individual international states and specific states in Africa. So, for instance, we have um, the, um, the a bilateral agreement between the European Union and Niger to curb migration towards the Mediterranean. Um, other countries like Morocco, um, Algeria also have bilateral agreements, international agreements. Um, so there are also, um, in terms of international as well, some countries have link to their, links to their colonial past. So like Mali um, francophone countries um, have um, specific security arrangements with, with France. The same with anglophone countries, which have some arrangements with Britain, sometimes for training and um, equipping the, the forces. But all these creates another dimension or, um, or adds to the governance of security and at the um, international level. And then the other one, which is becoming more important now, is the role of private security companies. It's becoming a big issue now in terms of adding another layer to, to governance of security because it's neither national nor international. So it's, it's kind of somewhere floating there. But there, there is a big stake, especially when you look at the role of China. China um, now has um, the biggest private security infrastructure in Africa in the last um, couple of years. So it's, it also creates the challenge of, of sovereigns in terms of to what extent are African or sub-Saharan African countries actually able to uh, govern security when you have multiple um, agents or agencies involved and some of them at the private international level. So all these fuse together to create um, a unique and um, often dynamic um, governance of security, which all fuse together and um, um, explain the security architecture of Sub-Saharan Africa. Personally, I think the issue is um, a, a, there's a lack of understanding of some of the dynamics of this of this conflict or insecurity. Um, so for instance, when you look at um, uh, climate change as an emerging security issue, uh, many countries have not actually addressed this issue as a climate change related issue. It's still very easy for countries or even international actors to uh, tow the part of previous um, causes of insecurity like ethnicity, like relig religion, um, but these are not the underlying issues. So uh, I, I, I would describe insecurity as, as, as a wicked problem, which um, has um, several uh, layers, um, difficult to define, difficult to understand, and then requires multilateral, multifaceted um, kind of approach. Uh, to solve. So it's, it's very important to understand the underlying issues because when you look at the ways these conflicts are being addressed or this insecurity generally are addressed, there is always a tendency to address the short-term implications without addressing the underlying issues of insecurity, livelihood, sustainability, 
hunger and poverty, unemployment, the things that actually drive um, insecurity are not still being addressed. So it's easy for um, international um, actors or even the nation states to employ a military approach, but it's never worked as we've seen in many instances, except the underlying root causes are being uh, identified it's still going to be, continue to be a problem. So I think the misunderstanding stems from the lack of the, um, the basic understanding of this key issue that have resulted in insecurity on its own.